Hello, everyone. This is the weekly community meeting for Project Hubert. It is Wednesday, October 27th, 2021. I'm your host, Chris Caligari. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm going to post our meeting notes to chat. If you could uh, log into that Google document and record your attendance, uh, we do track that information. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And at this time, uh, we have no agenda and just uh, one item on the open floor to talk about events. I'll give you, I'll give everyone a, a minute or two to uh, fill in um, some points that you'd like to talk about. And in the meantime, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Uh, hello, this is Michael from ARM. Um, uh, I have a little bit to add about uh, the proposal I made in last uh, meeting about the Zen hypervisor support. Uh, thank you everybody for uh, discussing that proposal and uh, uh, raised uh, some valuable, valuable qu uh, questions to uh, to the meeting minutes last week, and uh, I answered uh, most of the immediate questions uh, in this document. And uh, there are some questions that I can't answer immediately, and uh, that requires some more. Uh, further investigation, uh, we will continue the, our test and investigation and uh, answer, uh, cover all of them and when, when we have a detailed uh, doc, a design document. I think that will be in uh, a few weeks, then we will PR the a design document uh, to community uh, repo in the required uh, template. So just an um, update about uh, all these questions <coughs> commented the last uh, uh, <coughs> meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That was also a, a great uh, architecture that you brought to us last week. We really appreciate that effort. I'm just writing a couple of notes here in the, in the meeting notes. Um, okay, I got it. Thank you so much. Uh, Leonardo, uh, cloud in it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So I, I was wondering, like, my, my, the way I'm using Kubeford, um, I noticed that the, the virtual machine gets into a ready state uh, while cloud is still running. Um, I, I was wondering if, if there is a way to enable or make the the VMI or, the, or both VMI and VM resources to only be ready when the cloud init was has been done running. Uh, I got to work around with this by doing some running some internal HTTP server to give me feedback when cloud init is ready and a readiness check, readiness probe. But I was wondering if if if, if this has ever showed up to, for the VMI resource status to be um, only be ready when cloud init, cloud init was done doing its magic. Yeah, I, I think you actually found the solution. Um, so here's the thing about cloud init. It's kind of OS or guest uh, specific when it actually completes. So there's not, at least not that I'm aware of, a way to generically determine uh, when a guest has done 
anything uh, unless we have some sort of hook into that gas that's reliable and um, consistent. So with CloudNet, we don't really have that, but like you have observed, you can um, you can create a readiness probe and then have that check something within the gas to determine readiness. I think that's the best solution we have right now. Um, you know, I'm definitely open. I'm sure we're all open to hearing ideas to improve this, but it's kind of, it's, that's a difficult thing to determine uh, generically across all guests when CloudNet has actually completed without some sort of um, application specific hook like you've done. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, um, just an idea. I don't know if it's possible. Um, I mean, the only thing we we have is the QAMU agent. I don't know if that can be extended to somehow get back this information to Qbert. Sure. So if there was a QAMU agent hook that knew how to interpret uh, CloudNet. Um, results or or knew about CloudNet execution that we could hook into that in a generic way. Um, that would that would work. We'd have to talk to QMU about that, getting that mm -hmm. kind of hook created. You can look at the API and see if anything like that exists already. Yeah, I'm not aware about uh, we can I mean it's the only thing I that I think we can control to uh, some kind of information that is running in the VM. A brief search over the API does not show any sort of cloudnet integration. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to expose a HTTP endpoint, you could use the guest agent as a like an exec probe. Uh, we have functionality for that now too. So that would allow the guest agent to reach into the host to determine when something has happened. So let's say your cloud in it, uh, script wrote to a file. Then we could have the guest agent probing to find out when this file exists and then have uh, readiness marked that way as well. So uh, there's other yeah. options, I guess, is what I'm getting at, but it's all going to involve readiness probes. Yeah, you know, what, what basically I'm doing, I'm checking if the results, the result that JSON file is there. Um, and if in, into the var lib cloud need data uh, um, folder, uh, I was checking the cloud need source code itself. That's basically how it how it, how it updates these its the status as done. Um, so I'm basically returning a, a an in found HTTP stats code if that file exists. Otherwise, I return like a 404 or any other error related HTTP error. So the redness probe can decide that whatever it's wherever it's ready or not. So that that's work that's working for me right now. I, I was just wondering if, if if this was the best approach of if, if there was a, a better way to handle this. I think it's a totally legitimate approach what you've done. I don't know if I would say it's the best. Uh, like I think it works well for you and that uh, that is something that could even be used in production. Um, it is all depends on the application. Yeah, because my problem is that I needed to uh, uh, verify that uh, all packages and all systems and all system these services they were running, but that part of the cloud needs is a known blocking um, stage, which the which the modules dot final stage, if not wrong. Since since it's no blocking, the VM, VMI resource states as ready. Where for my particular application need, it's, it's not a ready state. So that's why I needed some kind of a synchronization between cloud units and Kubernetes. Yep, makes sense. All right, thanks. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll just 
I'll just keep that around this probe. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Leonardo. And what's next? It's been a quiet week. Nobody has anything to discuss. Okay, um, I'll take over then for uh, events discussion. Uh, we, uh, as you all probably know, um, KubeCon NA just finished up. Um, we, uh, um, David Basso and I did a, a presentation introducing KubeVert. Um, all Things Open uh, also just finished up. Um, Stu Gott and myself did a presentation uh, running Kubert on ARM64 and Raspberry Pi 4B. Uh, that was both uh, both conferences were really well received. Um, we had a, a lot of attendance, a lot of questions, and so uh, it's always good to see. Uh, no rest, um, DevConf. Uh, Czech Republic is uh, is now calling for papers. The deadline is October 31st, so Sunday. Get your papers in if you want to speak. Um, Alice Frozi has volunteered to submit a paper for us. Um, I believe that is complete. We have submitted today, so. All right, thank you so much. We got one in. <laughs> Uh, if anybody else uh, wants to submit a paper, um, go ahead. Um, uh, just let me know, though, so I can create a, an issue in the community repo. And, uh, uh, and if there's anything that you need, um, like uh, demo material, um, presentation, slide deck, um, we have all of that available. Um, bad news with Supercomputing Con. Uh, 2021 we totally missed the call for papers it was the call for papers was in january and uh the conference is uh coming up in like november uh this is this is one that i'm passionate about because uh all the big uh scientific organizations uh are present uh like uh cern and lawrence livermore institute nasa and uh, I would really like to pitch Kubert um, to those groups. So I will try to do Supercomputing Con 2022 come, uh, come the call for papers time in January. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Um, that's about all I have for events. DNCF incubation. Um, not a whole lot of progress. Um, the last the last update I got was uh, Nvidia has been interviewed for uh, um, to to get their opinion on working with the project. And um, let's see, we got Nvidia. We got. Uh, Apple Computers actually volunteered to, to be interviewed, which is interesting because uh, um, the, uh, the CNCF uh, Technical Oversight Committee representative for Kubert is from Apple. So I'm not sure how that, that conflict is going to work itself out. Uh, I haven't heard anything other than uh, uh, another Apple developer wanted to do the interview. Um, and then um, I've been speaking with Howard Zhang from ARM. Michael, I believe that you work with Howard. And uh, I think I have him talked into uh, being the third organization to interview. So 
hopefully uh, that works out well and we can proceed on to the, the next stage of due diligence. That takes us to the end of open floor. Uh, is there any pull requests or mailing list items that we should review? Let's do just a quick look at the mailing list. I'm pretty sure that we have everything covered. Uh, Roman, are you with us today? Yes, I am. Can you hear you, me? I hear you. Yeah, yeah you, great. Do you want to talk about Go real quick? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we So there is finally some progress on getting away from Qubit Client Go, which causes huge issues for a lot of consumers of the library because we depend on certain Kubernetes versions, but the consumer projects have other Kubernetes versions, which then conflict. So uh, if, you, if you click on the pull request down there, okay. then this with this change, and you go a little bit more down, it should already be possible for people to directly use client gen now on our API. Um, happy if anyone wants to try it out already and give some feedback, but the next step is then that uh, you don't have to look at uh, any of this at all, and you will find just the API in github.com slash qubit slash API, and you directly just add it as a vendor dependency and run client again on it without anything else. And then hopefully you only have one API dependency to Kubernetes slash API. And this one is normally absolutely easy to adjust to your needs. Yeah, that's it on that. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, and it's... I know that a lot have suffered really a lot because of this. So I hope mm. this will help. I like your uh, mailing list topic about hell, and then you have a coincidental 666 pull request number. <laughs> Ah, yeah. <laughs> so, Surely we are. My subconsciousness <laughs> must have led me with the title then. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize it. <laughs> okay. I think that takes us to last week's meeting notes. Okay. All done with mailing list. I'll, I'll put an, a note in here about the, the mailing list items and pull requests uh, after the meeting. Okay, 721. I believe it has been a while since we did a bug scrub. Two weeks. Yay, bug scrub time. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> or oh, are you going to do it? <laughs> I, I can't share my screen, but I'm ready to go with you. Through it. Okay. I can't believe I'm the only one who can share a screen around here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. DM stuck in a running status. Attempts a couple of times. Okay, this looks like, oh, if, I'm not sure, not sure if David is still with us, but this looks like we could have an issue in our cleanup procedure. So this looks like Vertendler is trying to clean up some leftovers on the node after the pod disappears, but it has issues doing so, and as such, it never gets to the state where it can update the DVM status, DVM status. Invalid value must be specified for up. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, something to look at, I'd say. 
trash except that. <laughs> Very detailed info there already. And could you assign it to me? Or, or, or maybe I have those, uh, those powers. No. I don't yeah, have yeah, sla I don't have just it right slash assign Uber. and my name. That's oh, okay. No, no, you just have to write slash assign and sure. Oh, yeah, slash assign it. But even works with that so that you don't make type of type of mistakes. This looks like an issue on the actual API update. Yeah, I've seen it into it. First looked to me like it was from the cleanup, but there's something about reserved version must not be x zero x zero. That's very interesting. It's invalid metadata resource version must not be zero x zero. That's very strange. Never. Yeah. <laughs> So the reason that would happen, the only reason I can come up with is if we have corrupted the virtual machine instance and former cache. Not even then. We cannot update. Can we update? Oh, wait, yeah, maybe. No, we can't. No, the resource version, we can't set the resource version. And maybe the ETC store is corrupted. The resource version no. is only set from the API server internally. We can't yeah, set it. What I'm saying is if we uh, clobbered the object metadata on the VMI object. So if we did some sort of manipulation in Bert Handler to a VM object in a way that caused the object meta to get cleared, uh, if that was done on the cached virtual machine instance, then it could potentially cause issues uh yeah, potentially but i that think that the api server yeah, yeah but i think we have to check but i think that the api server just completely ignores anything which is set there but so i'm not even sure if this is from the a a validation from something we sent or if it's farther down in the api server already but we have to check it Um, zero x zero must be specified for now. Yeah, this looks very weird. Yeah. Was a very immense sound bite from somebody's computer. Next, this is the next one. Okay, just making sure everybody was muted. Yeah, so the next one tests the FLAKE unit test. We don't have to do anything, it's from Daniel. We can handle that, and it's already accepted. VM is not rescheduled if it's on an unhealthy node. That's an interesting topic, uh, can I and it probably yes. works as expected. Yes, <laughs> we hear so that it's often. A, it's yeah. Issue. yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is an expectation typically coming from other virtual machine uh, platforms. And it's just not something that out of the box you get with Kubernetes. It's more of a platform issue than a, than a Kubert issue. And I'm speculating, but my speculation is probably right. <laughs> so we would have, yeah. David, are you going to the issue or should I come enter? Uh, I'll do it. Okay. Just good. skip over it. There's a two machine that would cannot use. Okay. Is there a we? There we have some communication going on as far as I've seen. Six six seven. So 
So let, let's also pull into the issue. Is there a weak questions are always good if we assign them to to Petra. <laughs> It's always it's just conversation already happening him. here. Yeah. Just, maybe just add Petra horror check for your interest or something, not assigning. Okay. Not even a ping, just for your interest, I would say. Let's uh, tag this with needs more information. What is it? Uh, needs more info? Uh, needs info, I think. Let's, let's try it. Needs info. Yeah. But it's slash try. Yeah, I got it. I got it. And then it may be need info. I don't know. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> Yeah, it's neat info. <laughs> okay. Gosh. Now we now we destroyed the nice conversation which is already going on. <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> you can tag it. Lost my window. Okay, let's try again. Uh, Cooper 46, status interface, SRIOB network is missing. It's like the same kind of bug as before. And show me. Yes. Interface and it doesn't seem to be in the status. There's another conversation happening with this one, so let's move on. There is already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, good. How about this device one? PCI device. Looks like Radic is already on it. Okay. Yeah, Radic self assigned. Yep. We go to the next one. All right. I think we have a good one. 
is still waiting. No, nope. Oike is in on this one. <laughs> Perfect. That's even better. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Fail with the start container, uh -huh. container disk binary. Yep, we we're the first one to look at this. This is, what is the number again? Oh, yeah. 6637. Init container cannot run. What does it say? Events, fail to start container. Use a bin. CP. That's interesting. Which version? What is there copied? There should nothing be copied. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, oh no, the binary itself should be copied. David, do you remember if we? We don't copy it. We just uh, use... we copy it to the shared directory, right? Do we? I thought that we, we had it. Up. Let me think. How do we do that? The, the basically the pause binary we're copying it to shared directory so that the the init is can run it but it looks a little bit weird what so is it the init container that's copying it how how did we do that looks like it's the init container yeah Okay. So let me check in it container. Is copying user being container disk to but how would would he even manage to get a I mean is you are using our virt launcher in its container? And that's one is the launcher image and there is CP in. So maybe well, it's on C. Are we sure that it's our it's are in we, our vert? launcher image are we sure we probably have to ask if are we publishing to docker io uh, what do you want to is already on quay it's already quay do we see that like, well the, what the, the, this is strange the container disk demo he should not use the person should not use that container disk demo disk anymore because it's old but it should still work it independently still work. so it should not be related so the image is Vert controller. Am I seeing this right? I'm confused by that. In that container, it's right there. It's Quay, Vert, Vert controller. In it container, yeah. How can that be? It's Vert launcher that we need, correct? Yeah. Or... Yeah, it should be Vert launcher. <laughs> okay. Uh... I have no idea how somebody Maybe, can get themselves into this scenario. Well, someone could change the virt controller. But someone could set the launcher image as the virt controller. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that's that's the only way I can um, see this. Even the compute, even the compute image is virt controller. I, <laughs> yeah, so, so this means that the controller image got set as the launcher image on okay, the controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can respond. Okay. So yeah, some there, were, there are some custom modifications in play, definitely.
Okay, uh, does vert, does kubert VM support sound card? So it does not, but we have pull requests which can do this. Uh, Victor also created a pull request which would do that and yeah. that would be, I'm sure I've shared a number in the chat. Uh, that would be this PR. So th this is a redo of a very old PR. And it seems like we have some use cases now, like some, some remote desktop applications would require a sound card to be present with and they would use. <laughs> so we were always missing this use case. I don't think that anyone speaks against anything speaks against allowing having sound cards. Cannot use console VM with Bert CTO. Wait, just give me a second. It just oh. responded. Cannot use console and see if it card work. Uh, okay. <laughs> Client go. No, no, <laughs> that's, that's, you. That's, that's a close, that's, that's a close, word cuddle is built together with the rest. This is a, a, a closed ecosystem without any issues. <laughs> so the client, client go is part of this code base and we just synchronize it to another repo. But for us, for ourselves, it's not a problem, just for other consumers. <laughs> Assignment to entry, nil map. I have no clue just from seeing that what this could be. Yeah, I can take it. So speaking of vert CTL, um, things got strange during the All Things Open demo. I had a Katakota scenario open for a short time, maybe 10 minutes. And uh, when it come time to um, curl the vert CTL binary down from GitHub, mm -hmm. we are getting 403 permission denied from GitHub. Okay. While running a live demo for 40 people. <laughs> so <laughs> got, my guess would be that a lot, <laughs> uh, I guess the issue is that a lot of people there were probably doing something. Well, where, where you where you at a team, where you there at a conference or was it remote conference? It was remote conference. Okay. okay. Um, uh, screen sharing my session. Uh, uh, to Katakota. Uh, and others were, yes. My guess would be that the piece from the Katakota labs were blacklisted for unauthenticated calls because there were too many. Can that be? I don't know. Or yeah, there was a GitHub yeah. issue. I don't know. Yeah, that's we are pondering on the same the same items, um, but we weren't able to show uh, a council to the VM. We were able to start it, luckily, by editing the VMI, but we couldn't show the council. Okay. Okay. Next bug. Minimize the pause of the storage fails. The, uh, there's a, looks like somebody's yeah, already see. commented on that. Do you still want to go into it? 
well, let's just see. Sometimes the person which opens the bug is also creating a comment or so. So okay. it's not necessarily someone else. Let's just go down and see it's if someone from yeah, Lugo is already there. But oh, maybe we can maybe ping Lugo to have another look on the comment. Ping who? Yeah, X X P bar. Okay. Okay, like all things. Um, okay, this was, yeah, this issue you know we, about already. Yeah, we spent a lot of time on that. Yeah, seems like we are through then. Yeah, sure does look like it. Um, 7.45, so uh, I return 15 minutes to everybody. So thank you for joining us. Um, see you next week. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out in the mailing list and Slack. Okay, thank you, Chris. As thank always. you. Well done. See you. Bye. Bye, Bye. everybody.